you guys. Let's have a little hmm, academic and facetious um, comment about 11 being able to push 12 off. What you're looking at here is software. This is a screenshot from two screenshots, uh, one screenshot duplicated. So we're looking at two screenshots, but they're duplicates. There's nothing uh, that's been changed from it. I can grab the the one one thing I did here was I I masked what it's called, got rid of all the outside edges on one layer and just left number 11. This lines up perfectly. So you see I didn't scale it or change it anything differently. It lines up perfectly with the existing image because I did not do any resizing. Um, I'm in the resizer now, but that's no resizing is taking place. I'm just using the shift around to move it around rather. Um, I can resize it by pulling them on these tabs here if I so choose. I'm not going to do that. So you see it's even. Uh, it's it's equal. If I um, So it's ghosting, if you will. I can take this number 11 independently by itself now because I, I made a copy of it. I This is what it looks like at the bottom. Let's pull it over here to the, a little bit in a little more contrasty place for you right here. So that's the bottom of 11. I removed number 12. I left it right down to the deck, and I even left the little chamfer there, the little 8-inch deal right here. You can have it or not, but let's go ahead and put that on the deck. And now let's have it slide along the plane of this line right here, because that's what they're saying. State it happened, and it pushes 12 off totally out to there. So let's go ahead and have it slide it off. Let's have it start sliding it off. Okay, just a little bit. Let's just have it just slide it off just a couple. I left these pixels on here, so we can so you can have a you can pause it and even look at the scale if you wanted to be fair. Let's move it over. Here's a pixel. Let's move it over one pixel. Moving it over one pixel. Look what happens here. By itself, it would then tear apart from number ten. It's no longer connected at ten. It's pulling through the canopy at this point. The canopy, being, these are not moving because they state that 11 pushed 12 off. We have a video showing that none of this moved while this magically happened. But they're using the cracks and everything else as a failure saying that it's already pushing 12 off. Let's move it a partial pixel. Right down here, a partial pixel. Well, same thing again. We have it tearing up part of the node, pulling apart at number 10. But wait a minute. No one's claiming that number... Uh, the post tension bars A or B moved at all. They're just saying that that 11 by itself moved. So when I move this, the bars inside here are going to stay where they are, and yet number 11 will still have a, a ability to push across. Well, if number with the bars A and B just magically disappearing in this whole formula of, of pushing number 11 and 12 off, as you can see, if if the number, this bar, number A, is still embedded in the deck, if it starts to try to move laterally uh, across, it's now going to start failing at that little bit of cover back here, the concrete cover that's behind it. It's going to start failing. So let me now blow this up a little bit. And let's do that a little differently. Let me grab one of the corners. All right. That allows me to tilt it, but let me grab this. I'm trying to make it a little bit bigger for scale, for fun here. And let's turn, rotate it back. Oops, there's my rotation. Just lost it. There we go. There we go. So now from the OSHA report, we see the diagonal and the number 11 in the bottom of that post tension bar in place. But yet, if all this sliding shear took place above, it only had two inches of cover to slide to break away from. Why is it, has it not presented itself above then and, and, and completed that task? Yet, in the OSHA report, they show it sheared here also, that it's sheared at the ground, at the grade level. You look at the tape measure here, it comes up the different width than, than the string lines, but I just find this all just, just too much. So they're presenting that it's sheared here. So if it's sheared, it wouldn't be able to rip through the back of number 11. 
so what, what kind of presentation is this where you write the word sheared here? Um, it's, it's, it's nefarious or it's, or it's just terrible. Um, so no, we don't have it. It did not shear and sheared itself and was able to rip itself through the back of number 11. So there's another defect uh, to mention in, this, in the report itself. It just needs some corrections, right? They need to get to it. But they're leaving it out here in the public, which is which is nefarious in itself. So, and in the background, you see it's ghosting. There's ghosting of the uh, structure right here. So we'll do this hard um, foreground one and go from there. So you see it lines up. Everything lines up. Nothing's been tricky here. Even. And the bars, also the bars I'm referring to, not the post-tension bars, but also the stirrups inside this location. If you look to the left at number 11, you'll see all the broken stirrups that went all the way down this guy. They're claiming as it slid across, it was able to break two inches of cover and every last bit of stirrups, all the combined forces, but no one's talking about what that would need to do, how strong that would have to be embedded in, the, in there to be able to equally break all that reinforcement. Tricky here, you even got rid of that rotation. So as it slides, it would have to go through the bars, the A bar for sure that's in the deck. B, that's negotiable with me because it's, it's already loose and it's already practically nothing there. But that would show failure on the underside so for this to slide over. It's embedded in concrete all around this ductwork here. It's magically able to go around the con slide across the concrete without damaging any of the concrete that's around here. This is their slide fiction friction, fiction friction, fiction meaning a story uh, that they're telling that it can slide through the post tensioning bars that are embedded embedded in the deck here, and not quite embedded in the deck here, just a little bit out here. That this can slide across, so I'd have to go through to so slide this. It's got to go through this embedded uh, uh, without shearing the bar. And without breaking the concrete, apparently it can break the concrete, go through there, slide off slide with this embedment, slide off, still push off 12, move all the rebar out of the way, straighten the rebar back up because the rebar is straight, as you see in the OSHA report. Report. And and do all this and cause the bridge to fail because it slipped here is what they're stating. Well, that's treating it like a truss, and this is not a truss system. It is not a truss system. It's a dead load like a girder. It's a damn I-beam. Um, for it to also slide at the base, it now separates at the t up here. It now separates at this point. Let's drop that down. This is the bar right here. It pulls apart. Magically, the same thing would have to happen. It would have to be shearing across the top of these guys or elongating. No one's stating that this magically elongated, that it's a marshmallow and it's got fluid in it and it just expanded. So it just doesn't have the ability to slide, as the OSHA report states. At this point, during failure, it's not the first part of the failure. It's not the first part. After it starts failing, failing, then it becomes a hinge and prying it off. And that's what we're looking at there. But that bar is not shearing, is not slide. This concrete is not acting independently of this of this rod. It's inside here. There's two rods inside here that are been encased in concrete. Um, with a uh, ductwork in it. And nowhere do we see a shear happening in the OSHA report, et cetera, or at the, uh, at the site. Let me pause. It's sliding across this. Of course, they, the OSHA report removes the reinforcement they have in here. Just remove it. You don't need it. You know, when you're trying to prove a, 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 a narrative, you just remove things that are in your damn way. You just say discount it because you say it's not structurally strong enough, supportive. Well, it, it contributes to some point. And if it's not contributing, well, show me how it was bent and, and caused to shear off and fail. Then we have the two bars. They just discount them. They just don't talk about these two bars. We have a sliding shear action going on, a sliding shear action going on 
after it's already been compressed. That this compression, compressing this, caused this to shear over, is, uh, is what they're stating, that the clamp force caused this to move over. But I just showed you it can't move over without causing a failure here and magically move, you know, other things, the rest of the structure has to move. Let's do this. This ripping down the uh, inside of the post-tensioning bar took place as the structure was failing. It's not a shear that took place as it just shifted sideways. I liked uh, what someone used in another forum there. He said to zipper down. I, I think it's perfect. Uh, zipper down is a great way to describe it. As we're looking at the base of this 12, mm, base of 12, base of 11, this is where magically number 11 can slide across and push, uh, and, and slide across, push 12 off, and this stay intact. Again, that, that zipper down, as we know, it's still intact because it's it's over on the other side and it couldn't do it if it was broke if it sheared off and broke free some time ago above it wouldn't have the ability to pull out all these stirrups all that steel it would just it would have just been done um, and so now you see that 12 the top the a was still part of the back of the um, it's off the deck and you can see why it didn't zipper down because it was stayed in the upper part of 12, mm, upper part of 11, but it stayed up above. It, it went south. It went one went south. One went this went south. That one went north, and it shows that that little bit of reinforcement. It's stuck in here still. It's still stuck in there. Um, and then they and then they they. Uh, mm, there you see it there in place. Post, it's in place, but in the dot in the in the narrative here, in the narrative, lower post tension bar of diagonal two sheared. Wow. Um, did it? Did it shear, or is this nefarious, or what? You know, or is this just a mistake? That's clearly a nice clean cut. So you tell me what what kind of nef what kind of how that is able to say sheared with that clean cut, and yet we're looking at it in place, right here not sheared. Share this little move here. That this guy can't go through there without without all the drama. It didn't happen. This can't move on its own. This is not the beginning of the failure. The beginning of the failure is from here and here at the nodal area, at the blister here and at the, uh, I call this a gusset plate, the area down here. The longitudinal post-tension cables fail because Detensioning number, I think detensioning number B allowed the clamp force to release, dropping down this back of number 12 um, onto uh, back on, releasing the clamp force, which changes whole structural integrity of one, two, and three. That this no longer, this is what that, that 12, this B rather, held 12, all this together, the integrity of it was held together by the clamp force in number 11. Once you release the clamp force in number 11, just look at this whole entire triangle no longer having a clamp force to maintain all of the structure's integrity. Loosen it, imagine you lose it by, say, 80%, and now all 80% of, of the forces that were working in this capacity now come down 10. 10 is now overloaded trying to resolve the forces from the base of 9, 10 out to, the, out to here. It fails right after the... Uh, the, the gusset plate I refer to it as, that means a nodal area. And it fails because the trans the longitudinal cables could not transfer all the loads down into the diaphragm. Why couldn't it do it? That's that's the question. Why couldn't it do it? Because they they have enough um, combined forces and theoretical forces to hold the the one million pounds of uh, load up before failure, but they do not. They do not do it. And I think that's because that it, it failed because it, it's you can't break this down and say, well, the, the, the combined canopy load is, because I'm going to call it canopy load at this point, is not just, you can't just divide it amongst the, 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 the entire square footage of the deck. That I'm saying they're spot loading. Um, 
point loading at each one of these locations where they where they join and they're point loading the deck at that point all the way down and the point load here was too great for D1, D2, D3, D4, D5, and D6 to, to, to transfer those loads out to here. And if we could only see that, it probably did fail if you could look at a top view of it like a V shape, the loads, the transferring loads because this is a, a point load. And it just progressively failed outwards, real, real spontaneously. Even though it shows a crack here and on the other side, it probably migrated from the center outwards, if we could only see, have seen that. From the center of the nodal area here outwards, because it is center of the deck, the 33 foot or whatever it may be span. And I'm thinking it migrated outwards, splitting left and right like a wedge. Okay, so here's the, uh, I believe this is the failed end. I've gotten this backwards before, but you can just switch it around if you think it's the opposite end. Look, just switch it around if you have to. Let's just pretend like this. Uh, let's work on the the break that we see from the video, looking at it at the uh, piers here, the uh, uh, nine ten. We see a break at the depth between nine and ten before the pier, and right after nine and ten, that break it seems to transverse go across the deck. We don't, can't be sure of that. We don't have all the photographs. I want to know if it goes, maybe it starts here, maybe it winds up over here. I don't know. We don't have photographs of that. But we have some, you know, video extrapolations through looking at the best we can. If it's across like this, you know, it would be easy to pick on any one of these and say, oh, this should have failed there. That makes sense. It failed because it only had one post-tension bar, uh, transverse tension cable, tendon holding it. Well, so did this, and so did this, and so did this. I think that the loads went back from the canopy. It was defect it was made defective once they released 11, uh, correction, post-tensioning in number 11, uh, bar 2 and 11, two, A and B. That made it defective, allowing that whole, um, that entire triangle, if you will, to release. And that gets our raising, our lifting of number 12. Our lifting of number 12, as I talked about in the other video, that the tape measure shows that it's it's raising upwards. That number 12 is not going down, it's raising up. That gives us our hinging, our lifting, lifting ability, if you will. There's the lifting ability. <laughs> Sorry, I'm laughing about something in the background. There's the lifting, uh, lifting of 12. Um, as you can see the tape measure and you see the other one before that, that's about a quarter inch. Here's a half and back there is even more, I'm sure. Here's a, about three quarter an inch, three quarters of an inch, half an inch. That was a quarter. So you can see it's lifting. And that's that lifting I'm referring to, um, that the failure in the whole, um, triangle, if you will. And then this creating a point load, number nine, ten point load. And it was not able to transfer the loads equally. So, so yes, these may be able to hold all of the dead load, but only if they can get the load out there equally and at the anticipated load amount. This load amount, I think, was an excessive point load that was not calculated for, obviously. I think this is my theory of what happened. It wasn't calculated for, that they didn't see that not grouting, that not having the base secure, that not... They're doing it in these stages. I don't know if their computer program, if they said, stage one, run a computer program, now detention. Okay. Stage one, uh, um, do not put grout underneath of it. Stage one, you know, the computer program running those models. And I don't think they did that. Or, or, if the, or the computer programs would just be defective if they couldn't see that this failure, then it would just be defective. If a human couldn't see it, well, they're, they're defective also, right? That's the best I got for you. So that point load created a concentrated load. And let's do it in a 45 this way, 45-ing, right? Except for it's it, it, because I have to be fair. Now remember, I told you I have to challenge myself. Well, if that's a point load, then it's also 45. It's also the back of it that also is experiencing force and this direction also. Except for we have more on this side between 910 to this area, nodal area, we already have the weaker section so it's going to go for the weaker section this canopy and the decking back here is still acting as one it still has the other system that's making it act as one it's still tied in 
the failure of this end is the triangle. When I say the triangle, I'm referring to 12, 11, and the canopy. The, the failure is here, the 12, 11, and the canopy. That triangle there, that failure now doesn't, th this still has a strong back. This is still in place from there down to there. The strong back is failing here because it doesn't have the base tying it in anymore because they've removed the post tensioning in the bottom of it, B. And that's where I, I keep screaming about B. Let me get to B again and do this. So this is the back of 12 again. This is acting independently, I'm stating. The top 12 sat on top of the deck. So 12 is not much to hold it on there, it, the bar. 12 is really not much for the world. So I'm saying that when they detention 11 A and B, this uh, released the clamp force here, which allowed 12 to drop down, cause that 45 degree initial bump uh, a bump and shearing at a 45 degree on the back of the diaphragm which shows that there's a lot more loads in there which Danny Page shows in the presentation of 900 well 950 kips or something like that he shows there um, and but we see this is released. It's going up in the air per the per the drawings we have here. It's up. It's not down. So to get this to lift up, this back of this this deck tied into the tied into number twelve to get it to lift up, we obviously need a moment, a hinge action taking place inside this deck, inside this here. So this is dipping down at this point. This is dipping down. The entire section is dipping down. This allows this to start hinging here and lift up just this ever so slightly, the half inch, three quarter. Because this is under post tensioning, at the point they released it, it acts like a, uh, it, at the point they released this clamp force here, that clamp force up there was able to create a, uh, uh, a um, right here, create a, a bow. And this to that degree before this reclamped again. I, I stated it reclamped again to stop it from going any further. And that's where we just look at it that, at that point. When they try to recapture uh, post tensioning back A and B again, they try to pull this back down. That just causes us to fail at that point. And then we just lost integrity of the canopy. Of what I'm stating about recapturing is they're trying to pull back the 12 and the 11 nodal area back together, if you will, by doing, adding post-tensioning. And all that did was create a super stress, if you will, in number 12, up to, and including the canopy, trying to bend it back in place, trying to torque it back into place using post-tensioning. Of course, that didn't happen. It pulled it up. It had the intention of uh, or the result of it just being pulled apart. And that's why we're able to see that all the reinforcement in such great condition at the failure, I believe with the reinforcement in great condition. Of course, the loads are already down 10 and 10 now, trying to make its way out to here, back into here. It can't do that because, well, let's jump onto this image and then we'll get to the because part. To explain why these two also stayed parallel, that one didn't pull away from the other. Remember, this has, number 10 has four post-tension bars in it that have not been, uh, touched with or manipulated as far as we know and they're they're working and in capacity they are working there so if you want to know why it didn't break further back well we still have this clamp force here and here existing so back to this drawing again again I think this is the wrong end but we're gonna stick with it still just because it just makes it easier who wants to reverse their brain over here I don't want to reverse my brain so this is a point load at that point nine ten is it still needs to transfer all the loads out, out here with no help any further of number 12. 12 is no longer helping, so the canopy is not really helping anymore, so all the loads are now trying to resolve themselves down 10. 10, and this design is not designed to take a point load down 10 to transfer all the loads across all these longitudinal post-tension cables, 
which uh, are designed to take all the load, they can't do it. So it radiates, if you will. Uh, this one um, it gets a la uh, it can't take the load. It reaches its maximum ability. It's no longer elastic. It fails, fail, 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 fail right across. But again, I, I argue against myself with things. Well, it also took the load backwards. But I just talked about that, that because this side, it may have taken it backwards, but this side was weaker, the weaker side now, because it no longer, because the back was tied in. I have to argue that because we saw it, the real tr image collapse. We saw the real image collapse. We don't see any of this stuff collapsing. And we have the post-tensioning failure, longitudinal cables from this end to this end. I'd love to know if they were, they were parallel from each other with a crack from here to here. Or did it shift over two feet and back two feet? You know, was it was it here and here? And we see that we see the bending moment here in the video, but maybe a crack. We don't know because they would they didn't zoom in on us for eight. We don't know where it is. It's crushed under the bridge. And was it forward of that by a few? Now you would think they had all types of survey equipment out there to do all that stuff, but I didn't see it in any damn videos, any survey equipment of the of the crash site. I think the state police do better with their damn survey equipment than, than uh, apparently than OSHA and also NTSB d does because OSHA is using, um, you know, tape measure, guesstimations, and, and no offense, you know, I'm in the report, so I don't want to really hate the guy because that's hating on myself. I, sorry, I, I should just be hating on him, right? Um, but I'm just telling you my bias. But let's, let's show that bias real quick and in sort of a clarity. And I'll end a video about about that. And don't want you to get sidetracked and just only think of that. But they had an opportunity to really get all this marked off really beautifully. It seems parallel there, but we know it's a torque action took place there. Um, and here, that's the canopy. The deck, the deck is here, and we don't know if it's exactly across there with these with this orange marker they did. Um, they did that orange marker pretty damn fast, didn't they? I found that to be a, 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 a very interesting, a very, it's a very interesting. Um, Terminating video, and wish you guys the best. I do have a one hour and 15 minute video to share with you guys. It will be a long one, but it will be interesting. I'll talk about this stuff.